So you're a country like China or Russia. You obviously view America as the evil enemy, and your goal is to crush them to become the next world superpower. Back in the good old days, you would simply invade them and then kill their leaders. Once you eliminated their leaders, you were free to pillage their resources, do stuff to their women that we can't talk about without getting demonetized, then you would turn their population into your servants and then boom, life would be good. The problem is today things are a little different. For one, America's military would simply crush you. They spend the most, they have the most combat experience in the world. Many people in America have guns. They have the latest and greatest weapons, fifth generation fighter jets, the list goes on. So fighting them head on would be foolish. On top of that today, we have to consider things like optics. Although we're still the exact same savage humans we were a thousand years ago, today things have to look just, fair, civil. Just look at how Russia invaded Ukraine. Optically, Putin looks like an evil bully picking on a defenseless country. So the public rallies behind Ukraine. They cheer on sanctions, they cheer on the seizure of yachts belonging to Russian oligarchs, and so on. This is not what we want. But what if I told you there was a much subtler, much more pernicious form of warfare that allows us to achieve the same goal? Remember, we want to take out the leaders of the empire you're looking to destroy. We can achieve that same goal without outright invading them, without nasty public assassinations, without throwing the first punch, without looking like the bad guy. Enter microwave weapons. Okay, now hear me out. I know this sounds ridiculous. I know this sounds like sci-fi fantasy land, but just give me a chance here. If we had some sort of energy weapon that was able to direct an energy blast that can't be seen by the naked eye at, say, a CIA spy, that would give that CIA spy a traumatic brain injury, he wouldn't be able to work anymore. He would be out of service. He wouldn't be able to spy on you anymore. You would be able to achieve the same effect that you would get from killing a senior CIA officer, but without escalating tensions, without the retaliation, without the overt act of war, without ever leaving a trace. Why? Because gunshot wounds, knife wounds, even poisonings, they're all obvious. You can obviously tell if someone got shot. You can test to see if someone was poisoned. But what was that? You randomly get painful headaches now so you can't go to work anymore? Stop being baby, what's wrong with you? It is invisible. If such an energy weapon like this existed, it would be a terrifying game changer. But lucky for you, it looks like it just might. This is Mark Polymeropoulos. An ex-CIA agent with over 26 years of service under his belt, with many of those years spent chasing down terrorists. In 2015, he was promoted to the head of operations for the CIA in Europe and Eurasia. So he was a very vital guy to the CIA to say the least, which also meant he posed a real threat to powers like Russia and China. And as a part of that position as head of operations for Europe and Eurasia, he was responsible for overseeing the CIA's operations in Russia. The only problem was he knew nothing about Russia. I was not a Russia expert. I'd never been there. So I did what, you know, even going back to our first part of our conversation, you know, you need some area fam. So I was like, I got to take a trip to Moscow. So to prep for his new role, Mark took his short trip to Moscow in 2017 to get a lay of the land. And that's when it happened. You know, I'm at the uh, at the uh, at a five star hotel about two blocks from the U.S. Embassy. Again, a routine trip. Didn't expect anything. It was it was I mean, wearing a business suit, um, something I had to do to kind of I thought for my credibility as a senior operations manager at our headquarters overseeing Russia, I got to go visit Russia. Um, but I woke up in the middle of the night with a with and I didn't hear anything, but it was this stunning case of vertigo. Um, the room is spinning. Um, I had terrible tinnitus, which is, you know, ringing in my ears, probably your, your familiarity with that from kind of uh, exposures to blasts and, and, and but it was, it was tinnitus, um, I was splitting headache and I was, I was, you know, felt physically sick, but it was the, just this incredible case of vertigo, which was frankly terrifying. And again, I told you about all the kind of the crazy moments in my life before my career, um, something really had happened. Uh, by the next morning, um, uh, I went to, you know, to a, phar the, a pharmacy with the U.S. Embassy officer. Um, it was some kind of medication to kind of control the vertigo. It got a little bit better. Went to St. Petersburg for the night, came back, and then I, got, I suffered another spell. I remember at a Moscow restaurant and almost passed out, but the room spinning. And then I spent the next 36 hours in my hotel room before I kind of crawled home. But something awful happened to me. And, and, and uh, I was with a colleague as well, um, someone who worked for me, traveling from headquarters. Um, he was hit by this as well. He has lost uh, hearing in one of his ears. Um, and, uh, and so something awful happened that time. I get back to our headquarters immediately, you know, and, and, and my condition is actually getting worse. I go to our medical staff and I said, hey, something really bad happened in, in, uh, in Moscow. I, you know, I'd heard of things like this 
um, in uh, uh, to our to our folks in Havana. Can you just check me out? And they kind of ran through some Havana the protocols that they had developed for for officers who had been hit by this this you know uh, uh, unknown ailment uh, in Havana. But they said they didn't seem that that I I, I kind of qualified for whatever. I didn't hear anything. They were very focused that I didn't actually hear anything. But my condition was getting worse. And again, this was I was I was in the senior intelligence service. I was the deputy, and then I became the acting chief of, of Europe and Eurasia. This is a this is a job which is a, you know a huge stepping stone um, to, to the really most senior ranks. But I couldn't even go to work. I mean, I, I was having these debilitating headaches every day. Um, I, at one point, by March of 2018, I, I lost the ability uh, for long distance vision. I couldn't drive. Um, Damn. Uh, I had suffered terrible cognitive difficulties, with brain fog, and I was I was. I went to every doctor under the sun, whether it's neurologists, infectious disease doctors, allergists. Um, uh, I think I had about six or seven MRIs. No one could figure out what was going on, but I was really suffering. And at that point, I, I was going to work two or three hours a day, um, but it just wasn't getting any better. Um, and I, I, I was I was going through our operations directorate pleading for them to actually send me um, to the University of Pennsylvania where they had sent some of the Havana victims. And our Office of Medical Services kept rejecting me. And it really? just, you know, it's really, it, this, is a, this is a really terrible tale of, of incompetence. A senior CIA officer managing around 2,000 other CIA personnel under his belt was eliminated as a threat, the equivalent of killing him, he had to retire, all without a bullet ever being fired, all without any of his higher ups even believing that he was attacked. And that is what we call the art of war. But Mark isn't the only one. In 2016, nearly 20 American personnel stationed in Havana, Cuba, all reported the same experience. They woke up in the middle of the night to a loud piercing sound in one ear, followed by intense nausea and vertigo. It felt like the world was spinning around them. They couldn't keep their balance, their heads started pounding unbearably, some would struggle to see clearly, some were taken out of service, but there was no apparent evidence that they were attacked. All they knew was that something was very, very wrong. And then it spread. It spread to American officials in China, Vietnam, London, and even some officials working in the White House. Dozens of reports turned into hundreds of cases. Hundreds of cases turned into more than a thousand cases to this day. And the only victims so far have been American diplomats, government officials, or their family members, with around half of the victims being exclusively CIA personnel, including a handful of Canadian officials as well. It was such a mystery that a new term was coined for it, Havana Syndrome. But you and I both know what it probably is. This is probably a targeted attack, an act of war, by what a US intelligence panel have guessed as some sort of directed energy. And there are only three countries in the world that have gone on record to say that they've dabbled with microwave or energy weapons. The US, China, and Russia. My name is Jake Tran, and we make documentaries on money, power, war, and crime so that you can see the world for what it really is. A giant game of acquiring power. You can't get out of this game either way, so instead of being a victim, why not learn to be a better player? Your parents, teachers, friends, society will never teach you any of this, so we're going to. Stay dangerous and this is the Havana Syndrome. Now to a CBS News investigation of a mysterious ailment commonly called... Mark Parley Maropoulos, the ex-CIA agent we just talked about, has recently released a book called Clarity in Crisis. Unlike most books written by ex-spies or soldiers, this isn't just another autobiography filled with a bunch of stories from his glory days. It is a deep dive into the most valuable strategies Mark used to deal with 26 years with some of the most high-stress situations anyone could ever experience. And the best part is that you can listen to the audiobook right now for free by signing up for Audible with the link below. Audible is a super easy sell for me because I've been using them for over four years now, and the stuff I've learned from their audiobooks has completely changed my life for the better, and I cannot thank them enough. I would literally be using Audible to the day I die, because listening to audiobooks is way easier than reading, and you can do it anywhere. I listen when I'm driving, working out, and doing chores. Audible is the biggest audiobook platform in the world that is constantly getting bigger, and it has audiobooks on anything you could possibly be interested in. Once you sign up, you can choose one title per month to keep from their entire catalog, and that includes new releases and bestsellers. You'll also have access to exclusive Audible originals from acclaimed experts and top celebrities. And you can try it out before fully committing, because new members get 30 days of Audible for free. So pause the video and get 30 days of Audible for free by going to audible.com slash jaketrend or texting jaketrend to 500-500. Again, that's audible.com slash jaketrend with the link below or text jaketrend to 500-500.
Thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. It was rough in the beginning. It was a dark place to be. We were kind of shoved aside and they wanted it to go away. All the dogs started kicking off in the neighborhood, barking, which is very unusual for them all to go in chorus. And then this just loud sound just absolutely filled my room. It felt like my head was slowly starting to get crushed. And then severe ear pain started. So I, I liken it to if you put a Q-tip too far and you bounce off your eardrum. Well, imagine taking a sharp pencil and just kind of poke in that. It was very um, jarring and painful and eventually I started blacking out. His brain injuries left him disabled, essentially retired at the age of 36. A weighted vest helps him balance, his service dog helps with walking, and his loss of vision. The man in this clip was one of the first people to experience Havana syndrome in Cuba. That first year, the American government had no clue what was happening to its employees. People were getting deathly ill, suffering life-changing disabilities, and no one could figure out why. Somewhere, something was very, very wrong. Had the Cubans been poisoning US embassy staff? Were they secretly trying to kill high-level American diplomats? Things got so bad that the embassy in Havana was almost shut down because so many people were being withdrawn back to America. It was an unexplainable phenomenon, but one thing was sure, the Cubans were to blame. But then Havana syndrome started to spread, and that threw the Cuba theory out of the window. Over the next two years, Americans in Europe, China, and Russia started experiencing the exact same symptoms. Not even White House employees in America were safe. This is Olivia Troy, an ex-counterterrorism and homeland security advisor to Vice President Mike Pence. The first time she experienced Havana Syndrome, she was walking down a set of stairs near the west wing of the White House. But it was like this piercing feeling on the side of my head. It was like, I remember it was on the right side of my head and I, I got like vertigo. Um, I was unsteady. Um, I was, I felt nauseous. Um, I was somewhat disoriented and I was just, I remember thinking like, okay, you gotta, you don't fall down the stairs. Like you've gotta find your ground again and steady yourself. It was almost like I couldn't really process. It was like a paralyzing panic attack. I've never had that. Um, I've never felt anything like that. And so I, I you know, I, I thought to myself, I mean, do I have a brain tumor out of the blue? Is, it, is this what happened? Am I having a stroke? And she wasn't the only one. In 2020, another White House official experienced the exact same symptoms on those same stairs. Whatever Havana syndrome was, it was now on American soil. And the more people who got it, the more it started seeming like Havana syndrome wasn't just a coincidence or a random illness. Instead, it was beginning to look like a set of extremely dangerous, targeted attacks. By 2018, the American government had a serious threat on its hands, and if they were gonna fight Havana Syndrome, they were gonna have to do some investigating. As soon as Havana Syndrome started spreading away from Cuba, the Cuban government was basically exonerated from all wrongdoing. If the culprit was ever going to be found, investigators would have to start thinking out of the box. So they tested for everything from pesticides to mental illness and still came up with nothing. They were just about to give up when the first viable theory finally hit them. Microwaves. Microwaves are used in lots of different things from cell phones to radios and even radar but exposure to microwave radiation could also cause all the same symptoms as Havana syndrome. The weird sound everyone heard just as they started experiencing the other symptoms could be explained by something called microwave hearing or the Frey effect. The Frey effect occurs when microwaves cause you to hear sounds like ringing, loud noises, and even human voices, exactly what happens to almost everyone when they're hit with Havana syndrome. Other symptoms of microwave exposure include headaches, neurological problems, sleep issues, memory loss, and dizziness. With this new theory in mind, researchers took another look at the brain scans of the people affected by Havana syndrome. This time around, they noticed small details in most of the brain scans that matched what they would expect from someone affected by, what do you know, microwave exposure. Microwave exposure that could be created by a machine small enough to fit in a van. But there are still unanswered questions. If it was a weapon, how could it be so directed as to hit only one person in a building full of people? How could it be that targeted? And who would have such a weapon?
there's only three countries on record that have kind of dabbled in microwave weapons. Yep. US, China, Russia. Russia. It was 1996, just five years after the fall of the Soviet Union. Two NSA agents were sent to a hostile country on a short assignment. A few days into their trip, one of the agents woke up in the middle of the night feeling deathly ill. He couldn't move, he felt weak, and his whole body seemed to be overcome by fatigue. In his own words, it felt like he had become, quote, a bowl of jelly, end quote. Eventually, the symptoms went away, but the agent never forgot that strange night. Ten years later, that same agent was diagnosed with early onset Parkinson's disease. At just 46 years old, he had developed a brain disorder that left him without control of his body's movements, balance, or coordination. Around the same time, his colleague, who was also on the same mission, was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease too. Both men believed their assignment in 1996 had caused their illness, and when one of them reported it to the NSA, they received a strange reply. Quote, the National Security Agency confirms that there is intelligence information from 2012 associating the hostile country to which Mr. Beck traveled in the late 1990s with a high-powered microwave system weapon that may have the ability to weaken, intimidate, or kill an enemy over time and without leaving evidence. End quote. Here was the NSA confirming that there was intel that some country had a high-powered microwave weapon all the way back in the late 90s. But no matter how much the media pushed, no one would say which country Mr. Beck and the other agent had visited. Luckily, they didn't need to. That's because going back as far as 1953, the American government had known about Russia's interest in using microwaves to disrupt American embassy staff and interfere with their communications. Between 1953 and 1976, over 20 years, a microwave signal was aimed at the American Embassy in Moscow from an apartment building around 100 yards away. For years, the American government had tried to keep it a secret. But when the ambassador suddenly became sick and started bleeding from his eyes, the government had to share the information with its employees. So not only had the Russians used microwaves once before to target the US Embassy, but there was a good chance that the hostile territory the two NSA agents visited in 1996 was either Russia or an ex-Soviet country, too. It was starting to look a lot like Russia was a viable suspect. And then Mark Polymeropoulos, the ex-CIA officer we mentioned earlier, visited Moscow in 2017, and that basically sealed the deal. Mark was getting the exact same response from the American government as the U.S. Embassy staff in Moscow had more than 50 years earlier. Complete denial. According to them, he wasn't experiencing Havana Syndrome. It was something else, something the CIA was definitely not responsible for. And it wasn't just him. Apparently, the CIA had been denying treatment and tests to loads of other employees experiencing the same thing. It got so bad, doctors were warning the CIA that if they kept delaying treatment for these officers, they were going to have to deal with catastrophic consequences. That's how terrified and helpless Havana Syndrome made these decorated CIA officers feel. People who were used to dealing with some of the most high-stress, high-pressure situations imaginable were on the brink of suicide. But no matter how much Mark pushed for his condition to be recognized as Havana Syndrome and for him to get access to treatment, the CIA just wouldn't give in. For the American government, admitting that there might be a powerful invisible weapon being used against American personnel that they don't know about, and the fact that the CIA was neglecting treatment for their employees that were affected, wouldn't look good. So, to the public, the government downplays it. They explain it away. In a recent report, out of the 1,000 cases of Havana Syndrome, the CIA reported that 976 were related to environmental causes or underlying medical issues. Because obviously nearly 1,000 people having the exact same symptoms in a six-year period is just a coincidence, nothing more. No need to panic here. But hidden in the details were a few cases that they concluded were most likely from erected energy. But behind closed doors, it's a different story. Just two years earlier, the Department of Defense put out a contract for a wearable radio frequency weapon exposure detector, a wearable sensor to detect if you've been hit by a radio frequency weapon. That doesn't happen if people in the government don't think this is real. 
you know, we know the Russians have this. Uh, it, 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 it is it is an open source information. The Russians have dabbled in this in this technology and in these weapons, and they've admitted it. Um, if they're able to take you know some of our most experienced officers, uh, you know, uh, off the battlefield um, in a non-attributable way, it's perfect. Um, it's been successful because not only has it really uh, uh, taken um, you know really quality intelligence officers uh, you know out of the intelligence game, it's also caused this huge kind of dissension. I mean, think of it. So, so when you say Havana syndrome, some people roll their eyes. Some people don't believe this. Um, it's it's it, this is exactly what the Russians want. Yeah. Um, it, it's to it's to kind of cause chaos. Um, so it's it, so in my view, it's been wildly successful. Even though things seem quieter now, today it looks like Havana syndrome is here to stay for the foreseeable future. Every couple of days, more U.S. officials and CIA officers come forward with the same symptoms. The Biden administration is even offering some victims between $100,000 and $200,000 in compensation for their suffering. So no matter how badly the CIA wants to downplay Havana syndrome, it's not going away anytime soon. The Russian government and intelligence services have a long history of testing weird weapons and spy gadgets on unsuspecting Americans. But they're not the only ones. For years, the CIA tested a huge range of drugs and psychological torture on its own officers and even innocent American citizens as part of their MK Ultra program. A program that the CIA hoped would give them the power of mind control. They thought if they pumped people full of chemicals and exposed them to enough shock, fear, or pain, they would eventually become brainless puppets. Puppets the CIA could use as cold-blooded assassins that would do anything they asked without a moment's hesitation. MKUltra was one of the darkest CIA programs in history, but going into how it started, what they did, and how MKUltra probably gave us some of America's most famous criminals like Whitey Bulger and the Unabomber means taking a deep dive into all the evil, abusive methods they used. And that would get any public video on YouTube instantly demonetized. So instead, we released it as a private, full-length documentary only available to members of this channel. All you have to do to watch our full documentary on MKUltra is to hit that Join button below. Once you do, you'll also have access to all our other videos on topics like the CIA's network of black sites and the enhanced interrogation techniques used there. Then we have one on everyone's favorite private island owner, Efri Jepstein, and so much more. People spend years of their life and tens of thousands of dollars to attend university only to leave not knowing anything about how the world really works. But by becoming a member, you'll get access to all this insider info for only $5 a month. And trust us, it's way more entertaining than university lectures. And there's a refund policy too, unlike most YouTube memberships. So if you join and you don't think it's worth it, email us within your first month of joining for the first time and we will personally refund you for your first month. After your first month, there is no refund. After I saw Sean Ryan's interview about the Havana Syndrome, I knew I had to make a video on it. And if you haven't heard of Sean Ryan, he has these really good interviews interviewing ex-military people like Special Forces soldiers. You hear a lot of cool war-related stories that you don't hear anywhere else. You should definitely check it out. I'll link it below. And if you're new to this channel, this is one of the biggest channels on YouTube for documentaries on money, power, war, and crime. So if you enjoyed this video, we have many more like these coming out. So click the subscribe button below. But that is going to wrap it up. Stay dangerous out there, and I will see you guys in the next one.